We've got some breaking news for you Fed heads out there. Jerome Powell just released the Fed's quarterly report, and the consensus was, the economy's pretty decent. Now this isn't the sort of, everything is great, I mean look, the Titanic's band is still playing. It more seemed to indicate that our economy is just that perfect level of slightly above mediocre that makes this non-newsworthy to 99% of outlets. The significance of this is, some of you may have noticed that those articles predicting an impending recession have largely disappeared. And what do you know, the yield curve inverted back, stocks are up, and it feels like we just kind of averted a recession without really noticing. Now, like every financial episode I do, I'm going to be up front with you guys, let you know that my crystal ball is currently in the shop, and unfortunately, it's a little too cloudy outside for me to check whether these stars are aligned or not. So I'm not going to be able to make any predictions. Tomorrow, Trump could tweet that Chinese trade negotiations are off, and well, this video will be a quaint reminder of simpler times. My goal here is just to update you guys on what the Fed is thinking and doing. With that, let's get started. First, the action, because I've heard that speaks louder than words. Today, we decided to lower the interest rates for the third time this year. We took this step to help keep the U.S. economy strong in the face of global developments and to provide some insurance against ongoing risks. Now, I realize that we opening this report talking about a quarter of a percentage cut in interest rates? Well, that might sound so mundane that some of you are regretting clicking that skip ad button. Maybe I do want to create a website with Wix. These minor incremental adjustments to the interest rate are how the Federal Reserve tweaks the economy. Let's put it this way. Picture the interest rate as a dam holding back cash. During a good economy, you raise the dam and therefore hold back additional cash. But during a bad economy, you open up those floodgates and get that cash flowing until things improve and you raise that dam again. Now to add a practical level to the metaphor, these rising and falling rates are designed to affect your behavior. By lowering these rates, the Fed is opening the floodgates because rates are going down on savings accounts and loans, leaving consumers saying, why am I putting my money in the bank when the biggest profit I'll ever get is that free toaster? No, I'm going to buy that TV and then take out a loan for a second car and put the rest in stocks. Basically, every once in a while, the government wants you to start taking financial advice from MC Hammer. During this period, we buy our way back into growth, and then the Fed starts putting the dam back up getting people to save again by raising the rates, and then preparing for the next time we need some growth on demand. Now back to today, because in maybe the most liberal usage of the breaking news intro I've ever seen, it was just reported that... Steve. One quarter point cut, the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates by one quarter point to a new range of one and a half to one and three quarters percent for the third rate cut this year. Breaking news, the glacier has continued to slowly head in the same direction. I mean, you can just call it news and people will watch. Just look at this video. Okay, bad example. So based on what I just told you so far, it seems kind of strange that the takeaway from this is we've recovered and are now safely looking into mediocre growth. What's driving that conclusion? Well, when you start to pull away and look through the context surrounding this rate cut, some of the speeches start to tell a slightly more optimistic story. In a series of appearances last week, central bank officials hammered home the message that policy is on hold after three cuts in interest rates this year. Now, This Federal Reserve Chair, Jerome Powell, is notoriously ambiguous with his statements, forcing some news reports to read like a college freshman's English paper. No, no, no. When Jerome Powell wrote that he was going to be cautious instead of using the word nervous, it really represented that he is slightly more confident in the economy and will keep rates higher. Now, Despite explicit assurances from other Fed governors, we still definitely got some of that English thesis paper analysis with the coverage of this rate cut. The Fed removing the phrase that it will, quote, act as appropriate. Instead, the committee now says nope, it will, quote, it. assess there. the appropriate path of the Fed funds rate. Nope. Great. Glad we got that one cleared up. 
People who weren't Jerome Powell, though, were very direct about this. Fed Vice Chairman Richard Clarita said, We have a favorable outlook for the economy. We think the economy is in a good place. We think monetary policy is in a good place. He continued to say that the current stance of monetary policy was likely to remain appropriate. As long as the economy grows moderately, the jobs market stays strong and the inflation is near the Fed's 2% goal. What this means is, pretty unambiguously, we're not going to touch that dam in either direction until something changes for better or worse. Now, When you listen to Fed Chair Jerome Powell sum up the economy today, it's an interesting picture of exactly what a slightly better than mediocre economy looks like. The US economy is in its 11th year of expansion, and the baseline outlook remains favorable. <clears throat> The overall economy is growing at a moderate rate. Household spending continues to be strong, supported by a healthy job market, rising incomes, and solid consumer confidence. In contrast, business investment and exports remain weak, and manufacturing output has declined over the past year. Now, One group that is particularly annoyed by these developments is White House economists. So people are spending a ton of money, but businesses aren't. Hey, remember when we cut your taxes to ribbons last year? Well, we didn't do that because we were trying to break the record for most debt incurred in a one year period. As The Economist reports, weak investment figures are particularly irksome to economists in the Trump administration, who argued that the president's tax reform would encourage a boom in business spending. Turns out, that didn't work out as well as we planned. If our economy was a video game boss, business investment and exports would be the flashing red spot. What we have though in the US economy quite clearly playing into all of this is a tug of war between a resilient consumer and weak business investment. Yeah. So how do you get businesses to spend more money? That's the billion dollar question. Well, probably more than a billion dollars are riding on that one. Now I'm about to kill two birds with one stone, because to do a callback to earlier, some of you are also probably wondering, why with such solid employment, consumption, and growth numbers, did we lower the dam just a little bit more this week? The answers to these two dilemmas are, according to the Federal Reserve, the same. Our views about the path of interest rates that will best achieve these outcomes have changed significantly over the past year. As I mentioned, weakness in global growth and trade developments have weighed on the economy and pose ongoing risks. These factors in conjunction with muted inflation pressures have led us to lower our assessment of the appropriate level of the federal funds rate over the past year. Yes, most of our problems are well, external issues. We have the trade war and there's a global slowing economy. Business enthusiasm could recover a bit in the months to come if indeed a trade war ceasefire is declared. Good news there because we currently have a phase 1 trade treaty with China ready to be signed. Now, I've been reporting on this trade war for long enough to know that, until I have a sheet of paper with two signatures on it, anything can happen. It's currently hard to convince businesses to invest in new manufacturing when the next day you could see a report like five months ago. Many had believed the trade dispute could soon be ended. When negotiators met in Beijing last week, there had been hope for a quick settlement. It was believed things were going well. And then US President Donald Trump made an announcement on Twitter. Oh yeah, the last time we had a trade deal that was all but signed. The president tweeted at a tarot threat and surprise, things fell apart. Hey cool, I hear you saying. Or does any of this have to do with the Federal Reserve? Good question, and the answer is next to nothing. This phase 1 truce development is probably factoring into their confidence, but they don't handle foreign policy or foreign economies. There's only one thing that the Federal Reserve can do to spur business investment. And that is to lower the rate we were talking about earlier. You know, just slide down that dam a little bit. Remember, the rate cut affects rates on savings accounts and loans. Basically, the lowering of these rates mean that, hey businesses, why don't you take out some loans and buy yourself something nice? What people will be looking for is whether a combination of loosening the money supply a little bit more in the system and building towards a more stable foreign policy 
will lead to the business investment that we're really hoping for. Only time will tell. For now though, just remember to spend a boatload of money on holiday gifts. None of those homemade socks or sentimental things, cold hard cash. You hear that one mom and dad? The country is counting on you. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'm proud to announce that I just opened up a Patreon account. And special thanks to Skeeter Zimble, Wayne Cardoza, and Yin Centeno for becoming my first three patrons. If you want to join, there's a link in the description. To support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.